Hi everyone, this is Omkar from Edureka and today I'll be speaking about phishing attacks. In the previous video, I spoke about SQL injection attacks where I explained to you what SQL injection is, how it works and also showed you a demo telling how you can use SQL injection attacks to hack a web application. So in this session, I'll be talking about what phishing is, how phishing works and uh, I'll be showing you a demo on how to use phishing to hack a target and also at the end of the session, I'll be telling you how you can be safe from phishing attacks. So first, let us understand what a phishing attack is. Now talking about what phishing actually is. On a day-to-day -day base, everyone that use internet use a web application. You can be using a web application through your apps on your smartphone or some applications on your desktop or you might be using a web browser. Now consider the case where you're using a web browser and you have to shop something online. Now you search for a product and you come across different websites and you like the product on two different websites. So one of these websites is a very famous, very popular, very trustworthy e-commerce website. And there is another website which is selling your product for the same price and uh, or maybe for a more discounted price. But it is not popular. You've never heard of that e-commerce website before. Now you choose to pay for your product online and for that you might have to enter your credit card or your debit card details. Now the question is which website would you trust more with your personal details with your sensitive details that is your credit card details. Obviously you would be less hesitant while you are entering the credit card details onto the e-commerce website that is trustworthy and you would be more hesitant you would be worried while entering these details onto the website that you are hearing the name for the first time. This is because you don't trust the new website. The other website, the popular website, you heard of the name before, you've used it before and you have a trust factor with that website. So this psychology is what hackers take advantage of in phishing attacks. So hackers take advantage of this trust factor and they fake themselves as a trustworthy entity to steal your sensitive data or your personal data. So phishing is an attack of gathering sensitive information of a target such as username, password, email ID or other sensitive information maybe your bank details, your credit card, your debit card details by disguising themselves as a trustworthy entity. So as I told you previously, if you are entering any sensitive information maybe your card details onto a trustworthy website you wouldn't be hesitant. So in phishing attacks, a hacker disguises himself as a trustworthy entity. Then he makes you, he tricks you into entering your sensitive information into that fake web application. So this is phishing. Now let us see how phishing works. Like I told you, phishing is a web-based application and this is mainly used to steal credentials. So we need a web application that is using a web server. Now, every web application is connected to a web server. When you're using a web application, what happens is there is some data, the packets, the information that is being sent from your web application to the web server and from the web server back to your web application. Now, this is how the communication between the web application and the web server happens. Now, what happens in phishing attack is the hacker disguises himself as this web server. So you think that you are communicating with the genuine with the actual web server but in reality you're just communicating with the fake web server or the fake web application that the hacker has built. And when you enter sensitive information onto this web server or this web application the hacker steals your credentials. So this is how phishing works. Now let's see what are the steps for a phishing attack. So the first thing a hacker must do is create a fake website. Because like I told you, uh, phishing is an attack where a hacker disguises himself as a trustworthy entity. So first he has to create a fake website, a fake of a genuine website uh, to trick the victim to enter the credentials. The next step is to send this fake website to the victim. Now suppose a victim is trying to access Facebook for example. If he goes to the web application by himself, uh, maybe he would enter the URL of the website or he would search for that website on a search engine and then uh, use the link to go to that website. Now when he does that, he goes to the actual, the genuine website and not to the fake website. So the second step is that the hacker has to send this fake website to the victim where the victim enters the credentials. 
the third step that happens is the victim thinks that this fake website is a trustworthy website and enters credentials and finally the hacker gets the credentials so this is how phishing works now let's see how you can use phishing to steal credentials of a victim there are different ways of using phishing and phishing is basically stealing credentials by disguising yourself as a trustworthy entity now how you use phishing depends on your victim so there are different ways you can use phishing and i'll be talking about two ways the first one is using already existing tools there are different tools that are already available some of these tools are already pre-installed in certain penetration testing operating system and most of them almost every one of them are present online on the internet and most of them are available on github for you to download and use so the first thing i'll be telling you the first way is using tools so for this demo i'll be using se toolkit which stands for social engineering toolkit and there are different tools like women social fish that i'm not going to be showing because it's basically the same thing you're trying to do and when you're using a tool there are two things you can do the first thing is using pre-available templates so most of these phishing tools come with pre-available templates and you just have to use these templates to create a fake web application so what if you want to fake a web application or creating a phishing page of a web application that is not pre-installed in that case you can go for the second option that is cloning a website so in this method what you do is you enter the url of the web application that you want to fake and then the tool creates a clone of that web application so first let us see how you can use se toolkit tool that is social engineering toolkit tool to clone a website using pre-available templates so to enter this tool i'll be typing se toolkit i'll be getting a lot of different options that i can choose from I'll be using the first option that is social engineering attacks because that's what phishing comes under. So I'll choose option one, I'll hit enter. And there are different websites. I'll be choosing option two that is website attack vectors. And then I'll be choosing option three that is credential harvester attack method because we are trying to seal the credentials of the victim. Now I've got different options. Like I told you, you can use pre-available web templates or you can use site cloners. So first I'll be telling you how you can create a fake phishing web page using pre-available templates. So I'll choose option one. The first thing you have to do is enter the IP address that the results of the phishing has to be returned to because when you create a fake web application and the victim enters credentials, those credentials has to be sent back to you so that you can use them so you have to enter your ip address to find out your ip address you can open the terminal then type if config and you can see different interfaces and because i'm using a local machine for this demo i'll be using ethernet zero and the ip address for this is 192.168.111.18 so i'll copy this and as you can see that this tool is by default taking the same IP address, I can just go ahead and hit enter. And suppose you want to change the IP address, suppose you have different interfaces and you want to use a different interface. In that case, you can use the IP address of the other interface. Uh, for this demo, I'll be keeping the IP address same and I'll just go ahead and hit enter. Now there are three options. There is Java required, there is Google and Twitter. And for this demo, I'll be creating a phishing page for Google. So I'll choose option two, that is Google. Now the tool will run, it will create a web application, a phishing web application. And I'll just hit enter. Uh, now the phishing web application is ready. So I'll just open the browser. And because I'm running this on my local server, I'll just hit local host and enter. Well, you can see that uh, there is a Google login page that is asking for an email ID and a password. And as you can see in the URL that it is not the actual Google page because the actual Google login page would have a different URL. Now, what you have to observe is what is shown on the terminal because whatever the victim enters, those details can be seen on the terminal. Now what you have to do after creating a fake phishing page you have to send this page to your victim and when you send this page to your victim and the victim enters some details maybe abcxyz.com and some random password and then he hits the enter button 
you can see on the terminal that the tool the phishing tool shows the email id and the password that is entered by the victim so this is how you can use pre-available templates to create a phishing page now what if you want to create a phishing page of a web application that is not available as a web template in that case there is another option that you can use that is the site cloner so let's see how you can use site cloner to create a phishing page well for this demo i'll be creating a phishing page of edureka community and the url for that is edureka.co slash community i'll hit the enter button edureka community is basically a forum where people can ask questions the doubts regarding various technologies and there are other community members that answer to your questions so uh, there are different options here latest most viewed there's ask a question it's also integrated with a blog and what we are actually interested in this part that is the login and sign up because we want to seal the credentials so this is what we are interested in and i want to clone this site to create a phishing page so i'll just copy the url of this page now coming back to the terminal i'll enter the phishing tool again that is se toolkit and i'll choose option one here i'll be choosing option two that is website attack vectors and similar to the previous way i'll be using credential harvester attack method that is option three and here instead of using uh, option one that is web templates i'll be using a site cloner that is option two and similar to the previous time it asks for the ip address i'll hit enter because this is the ip address i want to use and now you have to enter the url for the web application that you want to clone and because i copied the web application of edureka community i'll just paste it here and i'll hit enter now this tool will take a little bit of time to clone the website and uh, well it is ready now let's see how the phishing website looks i'll open a new tab i'll just close the other tab and because i'm running this on a local server i'll hit local host well this is the fake website this is the fake edureka community website now you can see that the interface looks exactly the same all the options here are available all the questions all the details there are different categories here and also the login button now if you have a victim that uses edureka community regularly then you can create a fake website a phishing website of edureka community and then send this phishing website to him so what happens is when he hits the login button he has to enter the email id and password and uh, when he enters the email id and password for example i'll be entering this email id and some random password and i'll hit the login button now let's see on the terminal what details we get now as you can see that there's a message that tells possible username found possible password found and you can see that the username and the password that i entered on the phishing page is available to me on this site so this is how you can use phishing tools to steal credentials of your victim now the question is when you create a phishing page using these tools and you send these phishing pages to your victim the url is something different there is local host or there is an ip address and suppose you want to steal credentials of gmail and you send one ip address and your victim opens it he sees there's a gmail login page so do you think he would actually enter his information because it would be fishy because if he has to log in into gmail he would just enter the url by himself or go to gmail login page by himself he would obviously think why he has to enter his credentials on the web application the website that you sent so if you are just using phishing tools and just sending the ip address in most cases you will fail because the victim will know that something's fishy in that case what you have to do is use the second way for phishing so the second way for phishing is creating a custom phishing website now to do this you have to study your victim you have to understand your victim you have to understand what pages he usually visits what fields what things he is usually interested in and then depending on his interest you have to create a phishing website now let me show you how you can use phishing by creating a custom phishing page now coming back to the kali linux operating system i have created a phishing page 
uh, that I will show you and I have created a phishing page that uh, gives you some offer there's a special offer and when I was creating this phishing page I had this one friend in mind that uh, usually keeps looking for offers to buy food because he's a foodie he usually orders online and every day he goes on to different websites and checks for coupons available or promo codes available so this friend uh, was what i had in mind and i created this phishing page that tells special offer offer valid on swiggy zomato uber eats food panda basically different food ordering services and i've also written that uh, you can get 80 percent off on your food delivery and to do this you have to log in with your gmail account so you have to log in with your gmail account to avail this offer and also under the get promo code I have created a login button and just to make it a little legit because uh, usually promo codes have expiry dates and uh, yeah so if I send this thing it would look legit and because there's an expiry date he would log in with gmail now I've also connected this web application to a database where I've designed this web application in such a way that when the user logs in to gmail using his email id and password then that email ID and password is sent and stored onto my database. So if I send this phishing page to my friend, obviously because he needs promo code, he would go and hit the login button. And I've redirected this to a fake Gmail login page. He would enter his email ID and password because he wants the promo code for food. And uh, he would enter his email ID and password and hit the login button. And then I'm just displaying something telling coupon details will be sent to your email address and he'll be checking for the coupon details for the promo code on his email ID. But what happens in the background is his credentials are sent to my database and stored in it. So let me just check what details I've got on my database. So I'll be logging into my database first. And uh, for this I'm using the database called test. So I'll just select that database. Let me see what tables are available here. There are two tables and there's this table called fishing details where I'm storing the data in. So I'll just print out. I'll just display all the rows from this table. So select star from fishing details. This is the query to print all the rows of the database table. Now let me hit enter. Well, you can see that there are two rows. This was a previously entered username and password. And this is the username and password that we just entered. So this is how you can create a custom phishing page depending on the interest of your victim and then steal credentials of your victim. Now that you've seen how to use phishing to steal credentials. Now what if someone is trying to execute a phishing attack on you? How can you be safe from phishing method? So you've seen how phishing works. You've seen that the main part of phishing is the URL. So the first important point that you have to keep in mind uh, to be safe from phishing attacks is never enter sensitive information on a web application that you don't trust because if it's a genuine web application if it's gmail if it's facebook and you're typing the url and then going to the web application then you know it is a trustworthy web application but if there is some random web application that you've never heard of before that you don't trust and that web application is asking for sensitive information especially your bank details because most of the time uh, phishing is used to get bank credentials and also email ID and password. So always be careful not to enter sensitive information on web applications that you don't trust. The second thing is always look at the URL of the web application. Suppose you want to log in into Facebook, then the URL would be www.facebook.com. This is the home page of Facebook. Suppose you have another URL some other URL and a Facebook page is displayed that is asking you for your login credentials Then you have to understand that there is something fishy. This might not be the genuine Facebook page in that case Always be careful to look at the URL when you're entering sensitive information Well, that's all for this session if you've liked this video like and share and stay tuned for more videos on hacking Where I'll be explaining different methods different concepts of hacking until next time then, bye-bye.